Hello friends, today we are going to discuss why the C band and L band is mostly used in the DWDM system. So here you are seeing the C is uh, the conventional band which has a range from 1530 nanometer to 1565 nanometer and there is the L band whose range is 1565 nanometer to 1625 nanometers. So first we know the conversion of uh, wavelength to the frequency. We all know the relationship between f c lambda is equal to f is equal to c by lambda. So c is the speed of light, f is equal to frequency. So by choosing the desired unit of frequency and uh, uh, speed of light, we will get the desired value. Like we have calculated uh, the frequency in terahertz. For the 1525 nanometers, 1530, 1565, and 1625 nanometers. So these are the different optical bands: O band, E band, S band, C band, L band, and U band. So C band and L band. These two bands are mostly used in the DWDM system, and we will discuss why this is mostly used in the DWDM system. So we are moving to the next slide. So here we are seeing there are two main reasons for using C band and extending it to the L band. The first reason is the lowest attenuation and the second is the EDFA amplifier. So the lowest attenuation 0.2 dB per kilometer is in the range of C band and L band. So this is widely used. There are three main regions. Ray light scattering, ultraviolet and infrared absorption. These are the main cause of attenuation in the uh, transmission line and these factors is minimum in this range so these range are used for the DWDM system second is the EDFA amplifier which is mostly used in optical network and which is very cost effective so EDFA amplifier works in this range very effectively so these are the two main region for which we are using the C band and L band for the DWDM system let us some information about the attenuation and three main factors causing the attenuation. Light needs to spend energy to propagate. The attenuation of a fiber section is expressed by the relation P out is equal to P in minus alpha L. Where alpha is equal to the attenuation constant, L is equal to the length of optical fiber, P out is equal to output power and P in is equal to the input power. So in the figure you can see this is the P out and this is the PN and this is the length of the fiber and this is the alpha. Uh, which is the attenuation factor so whenever the light is spent through the medium it attenuates and the output power is always less than the input power so here is the question why does attenuation of the signal happens in the optical fiber and the answer is the because the light needs to spend energy to propagate into the fiber so whenever light propagating to the fiber it spends energy it decreases its energy and it energy decreases due to the uh, physical property of the transmission medium. The attenuation of a fiber section is expressed by an exponential decay relation connecting the optical signal output power with the input power. Using a logarithmic unit system, the relation appears as P out is equal to P in minus alpha L, where alpha is the actual attenuation characteristics of the fiber and L is the length of the fiber itself. P out and P in are expressed in the dBm, L in kilometer while attenuation is expressed in dB per kilometer units. So each kilometer the light travels along the fiber causes an attenuation of the signal whose amount depends on its frequency. The dominating absorption effect is the Rayleigh scattering caused by microscopic inhomogeneities of the index. The term inhomogeneities means the index, the refractive index of the fiber is not uniform from the upper to the core. Whenever we are moving to the core, the refractive index changes. That can scatter a single ray of light in different directions. This effect becomes less severe with increasing frequency. The medium characteristics is not changed but the wave becomes longer and is scattering less sensible. Moreover, photons traveling along the fiber can also be absorbed by impurities and in the first part of the spectrum an important part of the total loss is related to the ultraviolet absorption. And above 1700 nanometer light starts to be directly absorbed by the molecule of the silica. So above 1700 nanometer light cannot be used for the DWDM system because Infrared absorption increases after 1700 nanometer. So, 
we have a range from 1530 to 1625 nanometer which is widely used in DWDM, DWDM system. In this figure you can say this is the attenuation dB per kilometer and this is the frequency. So you are seeing the relay scattering, the ultraviolet absorption and the infrared absorption. These are the three main factors which are below in this range 1550 nanometer. And here you are seeing the transmission loss is also very low. Transmission loss is also very low in the C band and L band. So these two bands are most important band and which are used in the DWDM, DWDM system for the traffic carrying. In upper figure you can see that in the frequency range is 1510 to 1630 the attenuation value is low. The attenuation is 0.2 dB per kilometer in this range. So the second main region is the EDFA amplifier operates in this range effectively. Dense wavelength division multiplexing refers originally to optical signal multiplex within the 15 50 nanometer band so as to leverage the capability of the erbium dope fiber amplifier which are effective for the wavelength between approximately 1525 to 1565 nanometer c band or 1572 to 1610 nanometer l band edf amplifier which is mostly used in optical network and the very cost effective operates in this band very effectively here you can see the ITT defined DWDM wavelength with the 50 GHz spacing. These are the different wavelengths we are using in the C band like 1529.16, 1529.94, 1530 1530.72. This is the chart for the odd wavelength number and this is the chart for the even wavelength number. So thanks for today.